WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present the championships of the New Hampshire Candle Pin Bowling Association. It's the 1996 All Event State Tournament. <laughs> The 1996 All Event State Tournament is sponsored in part by the Carphone Store of Nashua. And now from the Legendary Bowling Center, here are Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome back once again to the Londonderry Bowling Center here in Londonderry, New Hampshire, and week two of our men's All Event State Championship between Dave Richards and Gary Carrington. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Uh, the first three games of this match last week, and now we will roll the last three. Uh, good back and forth action during the first three games of this match, and we had two kind of interesting little subplots going. Uh, Gary started out uh, like a house of fire, and then kind of picked it up again at the end. Dave was pretty consistent throughout, but only because he really couldn't string any marks together at any point. That's right. So even in game of candle pins, there's momentum, and Gary seemed to have it, lose it the second game, and it looked like Dave was going to take a lead into this week until Gary came up with a double strike the final two boxes. So you, you, not, you never know until the ball's thrown. All right, let's meet our uh, two bowlers once again in case you missed any of last week's action, or just to refresh your memory, after the uh, 21 games of competition for the state championship and then the uh, match play round, the first guy to get into the, uh, or one of our two finalists, the number four seed, the guy who advanced through the match play competition from Plastow, New Hampshire, Dave Richards. Okay, Dave comes in averaging 133, high single 196, high triple 470. And again, uh, last week, Dave Richards with a 372. He rolled 12 marks, nine of those were spares, three strikes. And he'll be facing the number one seed, the guy who uh, finished as the top overall seed for the second year in a row in this event after winning it last year, our number one seed from also Plastow, New Hampshire, Gary Carrington. Gary averaging 132, high single 196, high triple 480. And last week, Gary, with that double strike to finish, wound up with a 388, 10 spares, and 3 strikes. So again, just to refresh your memory on the scores, we will pick up with today's action. This is game four now of a six-game match, and we'll show you the scores once again. 388 for Gary Carrington, 372 for Dave Richards. So we'll be back with games four through six as we uh, complete the state men's all events championship here on the Winds of New England right after this timeout. Don't go away. <laughs> Game four, about to get underway. A 16-pin lead for Gary Carrington. Dave Richards will lead it off. Being the lower seed, Dave leading off uh, four of the six games in this match. Oh, fine spare. Well, starting right off with a big spare on lane 30. That's got to make Dave feel pretty good. <laughs> Probably wondering what's happening. <laughs> Kick that three pin out of there. No, the three seven and not a real good angle. Wood behind it. Oh, yes. Great shot. Played it on the inside. Have the three pin come off the right side wall and into the seven. Great shot. Two in a row. Well, two weeks ago, we saw Janet Pock in the ladies' all events final come out with just a flurry of marks in this fourth game and really put the match away quickly. Oh, oh Gary's, almost. Gary's oh. bid for a great spare. And a nine box. Now Gary over to lane 29. Pulled that one to the left. That came out of his hands left all the way. And left again. Six 
box for Gary. So a chance right away here off the top for Dave Richards to retake the lead. Just sliding by the head pin, but gets a decent drop of seven. And he does retake the lead. He leaves himself the one, four, and seven. Problem here is probably going to be the seven pin. No, oh. too full in the head pin, left both four and seven. The angle that would, protecting that seven pin a little bit. Good 10 box, 45 through three. Retrail by 16 last week. It's up by 20 now, so let's uh, do the math. Four pin lead now overall for Dave Richards. <laughs> Dave waving at the wood. <laughs> Dave studies this like he's reading a putt. <laughs> he's looking at it from every angle. He was looking at that back piece, see if it was frozen. It wasn't. Oh, great shot. Not much room for error there. Had to be right on the cap. That's three out of four boxes. Marks the second game, uh, first game of week number two, I should say. I'll say the second match. It's all one match. It's <laughs> second week. Two parts. Break there for Gary. He leaves himself the five, six, and ten. He's had this leave before. And now the wood slides off to make it more difficult. We should take a moment to once again acknowledge Rob Ficarra and the rest of his staff at Exeter Lanes in Exeter, New Hampshire, for handling all the details of the 1996 New Hampshire State Candlepin Championships. Their first time hosting, right? Yes, and they did was. a terrific job. And they certainly did. So our uh, hats off to uh, Rob and his staff in Exeter. The entire uh, state championship, except for the televised finals that you're seeing here on the wins, held at the Exeter Lanes. Congratulations to uh, not only all of the participants, but especially all the champions. A great spare. Gary's first spare this week. He made it a beauty. He splits the two in the four. Two jumps over into the six. That's a five fill for Dave Richards. Four horsemen left plus the nine. through five. Our thanks go out to the participating sponsors presenting the 1996 state championship events here on the Winds of New England. Dave Richards gets another spare. Another one. Dave made that shot look easy, but it's not with that wood. He had to have that wood come off the wall, and he had to catch enough of it to do just that. That was a nice spare by Dave Richards. And most particularly, two sponsors that are helping uh, bring all the action your way during the state championship. The Carphone Store of Nashua, now an authorized Bell Atlantic 9X mobile agent. And a new sponsor here on... Candlepin Bowling on the Winds of New England. Meineke Discount Mufflers. Not quite for Gary, trying to jump that out of the channel. Gary gets this pin, which he does. This match is dead even again, with now 25 boxes to go. trying to match the mark left up there by Dave Richards, and he betters it with the strike. Powerful strike that time. 
Certainly was. Didn't take very long to go down, kicking the five pin from behind. Dave on a spare. Look out. Nine drop. Well, he's got a choice here. Right at the five or take the wood. He's shooting at the pin, I think, the way he's going. And two marks in a row. Quickly over to lane 29 for the fill, and it's six this time. Dave doesn't waste a lot of time. No, he's one of those bowls that once he gets going, you almost want to <laughs> step out of the batter's box, slow him down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that close. Oh, oh boy. Well, if body English counted for anything, you would have had That would have been down. Yep. <laughs> Instead, it's a 10. 114 through 8. Let's take another look. Didn't split him, but he got some sidewall action, which... Looked like the very six pin that came over. Yeah, very nearly accomplished the same thing. Gary Carrington working on a strike. Wow, got an extra pin, but well, hang on, nothing good happening yet. Two more, two more. <laughs> well, well, now let's have it come back out so we can play the ball off this piece of wood. <laughs> Gary says if Dave can motion the wood, maybe it'll work for him too. Well, he got it to come back a little bit. Probably not as far as he wanted. The uh, back cap of that wood looks like it's about even with the six pin. Maybe even a little ahead of it. Spray and pray. Oh, nope, missed the wood completely. He's trying to cap it. That might have been the play, though, to try and uh, yeah, I think catch he the cap. Yeah, I think he realized it was too deep for the ball to carry him off and get that pin. Got to make the choice that gives you the best chance to make the spare. Oh, boy, a one in the five. You don't see that very often. Here's where you really have to bear down. You want a nine or a ten out of this mess if you can. On the way. Take an eight. So Dave Richards now leading by nine in the match. Again, leading this game by 25, as you see on the left. But the cumulative score, he's leading by nine in the match. This is game four of six to decide the state championship. One, two, four, and ten, not quite. A little too much of the head pin. Pinning very well. He's left only one pin standing. It's back on the fifth frame, as you can see, the nine. pin in the wood maybe because there's a second piece of wood in the channel behind it might cause it to snap across for the 610 oh. nothing there well by those two pins this becomes Dave Richards best game in the four so far 133 Total of 505 through four. Oh. Gary with a chance to even this thing up or maybe retake the lead before the end of the game. Trails by nine right now. 
Three and six pins for the spare. Ooh, sliding by the three. Spare? No. So Dave Richards will have the lead. For the first time in the match at the end of a game. And the lead will be nine. 133 for Dave Richards, 108 for Gary Carrington. We'll be back with game five here at the Londonderry Bowling Center when we return. Don't go away. At the Londonderry Bowling Center, it's a nine-pin advantage with two games to go. Dave Richards, 505. Gary Carrington, 496. And in game five, Gary will lead off. This has just been a great match, back and forth throughout. And the big strike. Strike number five in the match for Gary. Just tripping the six pin. Need a little help on that one. You should see the 124 for Gary now includes the 16 pins that he was leading from last week. So now your totals, as far as the match go, will be correct. Well, Gary's going to lose that piece of wood in front, but he will have a piece in the back. We'll clarify that computer situation again after this box. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> and the 10. So as we swing over to the computer again, again the 124 under Gary Carrington is a reflection of the 16 pins that were added to his 108 of last game. The total lead in the match in the lower right-hand corner is correct. That number will be correct throughout. Dave Richards leading the match by nine. And he came close to starting with a strike. Everything but the five and the eight. And a piece of wood out in front, but he can get by it. Ooh. Got by it, but the ball bird broke sharp at the end and just slid by the, the object being the five. Ten box. So we're all even again. The 41 boxes were in a tie. Dave will shoot at the triangle. Three, five, and six. Oh. Yes. Sharp on the spares. Give Dave a spare leave, and he hasn't missed one. <laughs> Clean triangle pickup. So one mark for each. And Gary is looking at another split. This time, the two and the six. Ten box. Another split. 
Well, they're getting closer together. This time the five and the six. Nope. Another ten bucks. Three in a row for Gary. And whatever Dave throws on this spare will reestablish a lead. He's going to shoot at the four horsemen. A six fill on the spare. Piece of wood always helps with the four horsemen between the four and the seven. Not if you miss the head pin, it doesn't. He really pushed that ball, shaking his head. It wasn't a clean release as he normally is, or he has been doing throughout the match. 34. Lead back and forth. Dave by four now. Overall now, that's including last week. Spare leave on the five and the eight. Yeah, he just had the five and the eight on lane 30 a couple blocks ago and slid by the five. Let's see. Same thing. Nope. <laughs> 10. We will take a break. Down to 16 boxes now to decide the state championship, and the lead is four for Dave Richards. We'll be back to Londonderry after these words. <laughs> Gary Carrington. Defending state champion. A little high again in another split. Wood's coming over, though. He's going to have a shot at this one. Right about there. Here's a situation where you, I think you want to catch the four pin clean. You don't want to hit the wood and the four pin at the same time. That's why I would push it away from uh, behind the ten pin. Now yes. he's enough to catch it anyway. Good spare. In the fifth. The second mark of this game. Oh, he pulled that one badly to the left. Just four. Delicate shot there, but not able to make it happen. And the 10. Well, you know, if Dave throws two 10 boxes here, it'll be all even again. Anything more, and he'll have a lead. Anything less, the lead reverts back to Gary Carrington. That's the way it's been going all during this two-week match. Ten box. Gary Carrington had a 31-pin lead late in game one, but uh, it was closed down to a 23-pin lead in the final box by Dave Richards, and that's uh, been as wide as the gap has been ever since. It's been very, very close all the way. Oh. That's how close that was to a spare. Well, if he gets this, he'll have his two tens, and we'll have a new match with 16 boxes to go. Now he's going to let Gary have a one-pin lead. <laughs> So Gary leading the match by one. 
Dave just missing the spare on the big five. Just couldn't get a break off the wall for the nine pin. And Gary punching through the heart again, this time a spread eagle. Well, he's been very, very good throughout this match at working these things out for good boxes. Six this time. Just catching the head pin and then catching a break. A couple extra pins go and, well, probably the wood could have turned a little better for him, but he'll shoot at the four and the ten. Make it the two and the ten. Ten box. And 89 through nine, uh, through eight, I should say. Dave Richards trailing by one. And he knows he has an opportunity here to retake the lead in these two boxes. That was not the ball he wanted. Flush on the head pin, drove that straight back. And just when you think the other ball has left an opening for his opponent, you just can't take advantage of it. Nine. That's enough to give Dave the lead again by two in the match. Oh, oh, big break on the 10. It looked like he was a little heavy. It looked like he's going to be left with a 6-10. Six, six went out, and finally the 10 leaves himself just a 2, 4, and 7. And slides by the object, so opportunity lost there. Nineteen in the two boxes, enough to give Dave the lead again by one. I think this thing might go to overtime. <laughs> Almost seems destined. Big strike there. Just tripping that four pin. Second strike of this game. Looking for the double, everything but the five. That would have been huge if he had doubled right there. Say that again. Did That's it to wrap did. up the third game last That's week? That's right, I was just gonna say that. Spare on strike, so Gary. Bouncing back from that six box gets a couple of big marks here. By the way, if this match does go to overtime, if the six games do end up tied, we go to our uh, sudden death format with two boxes for each bowler until they break the tie. Big oh. finish. Big finish by Gary Carrington. 39 pins in the last two boxes. 128 for Gary and a 624 total through five. Dave Richards needs 119 in this game to even it up, so he would need two big marks just to even this match up going to the last game. He's got the one, seven, nine, and ten possibilities. Now well, that piece of wood behind the head pin may be the key. Let's see. Oh, that close. <laughs> Everything but the seven. Well, 
Dave is going to have to make one more comeback. He's made a few already in this match. Here's how close Dave came on that spare. Oh, he jammed that piece of wood in the channel in front of the seven pin. But somehow it never went over. Dave could really use a mark here in the tenth. Gary's reclaimed the lead by nine. But he also has a spare nine posted. So he's going to gain a few more. Eight bucks, 99 for Dave Richards, and a five game total of 604. So a 20 pin lead for Gary Carrington with one game to go to decide the championship. We'll be back to the Londonderry Bowling Center after these messages. Through five games, there are your totals. Gary Carrington with a 20-pin lead over Dave Richards, 624 to 604. So we're down to our sixth and final game to determine the state championship, and Dave Richards will have to do it from a deficit. Well, he's come back two or three times in the match so far, last week and this week, so see if he's got one more run in and in himself, just sliding by the head pin there. Yeah, this is the largest lead that uh, Gary has had since way back at the end of the first game last week. As he came on with a flurry again in the end of game five, right before that last break with a strike spare nine and made up a lot of ground in a hurry. Well, hardly a spare leave, but perhaps the wood can Cause something. Yeah, you just con concentrate on the three six, and good things happen if you can get those two. Mm. But if you slide by the object, which was the three, then chances diminish greatly of making that spare. Nineteen. Not the way Dave wanted to open up, being down by twenty. Quick reminder, Dan. Uh, it's June first already, and it won't be that long before we're starting up again in the fall. Just a few months. And we hope that you'll stay tuned to the winds of New England throughout the summer, and especially as we get toward the fall, we will have all the uh, details on when the new season will begin, both on Stars and Strikes and on Candlepin Skins. Big strike for Gary Carrington. Huge when you're up by 20 to start off that way. And speaking of 20, that's his 20th mark in the match. Dave Richards has 18 to this point. That's seven strikes in the match for Gary Carrington. In fact, seven of his last 15 marks have been strikes. Started out last week with five spares in a row in the early going. Going to shoot at the three, five, and six. Wants the piece of wood to roll back, and it does against the five pin. Chance to go spare on strike. Yes. That's big right there. Two big marks to start game three. Again, that total lead in the lower right hand corner reflects the overall lead in the six game match. So you'll want to keep an eye on that. That won't be a strike, but Dave will have an opportunity for a spare here. On the single. Two hundred fifty to the runner-up, five hundred, and the state championship trophy to the winner, and a oh, big right strike. back. A spare for Dave Richards to be denied. All twisting and turning from right to left, right into the one-three pocket. It's just a matter of whether or not the ten pin was going to go for the strike. That's 20 marks now in the match for Dave Richards. Another big fill. Almost all of them for Gary. 
Everything but the six. Another spare, three in a row, three marks in a row to start this third game. Spread eagle this time. Just four on the fill. But his lead is up to 34 at the moment. He'll lose a little of that because he's opposite a strike here in the fourth, but certainly at this point, you'd rather be 20 something ahead than 20 something behind. That works that spread eagle out for the 10 box. So we will have the final six boxes of this match. Gary Carrington with a 34-pin lead. Dave Richards working on a strike. That's how we'll pick it up when we come back to Londonderry after this timeout. Well, here is a very, very big ball. Maybe the biggest of the match for Dave Richards. Think he's thinking strike. <laughs> for the double! Oh, almost! Close. Oh, my. Well, that changes everything around if he throws a strike there. Ooh. Oh, when he missed the spare. That's probably even bigger. That miss. Missed with the ball actually staying on the lane. Just enough room to get by that pin without knocking it down. Now you talked about this at the end of last week's show, Dan. There have not been a lot of spare opportunities missed in this whole match. These guys have taken advantage of what's been there for the most part. And the thing, you always remember the last one you missed. You right. don't remember the first one. <laughs> well, with this Wood, he's got a chance at this. The sleeper in the back would... No, Wood didn't do anything for him. Well, two open frames here for Dave Richards. He trails by 25, and... Certainly he'll be uh, hoping that Gary, that Gary doesn't put up too much offense here in these two. Yeah, I guess at 25, he's down just about three marks with four frames remaining for him. So if Gary were to put any up, it's immediately in the double strike situation. And Gary hits the middle of the pack again for a spread eagle. Look out. Oh, 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 oh. Great effort on the spread eagle. It's never safe when <laughs> Gary's up there, I'll tell you. Makes that almost a routine 10 after the spread eagle. Second time he's done it in the last few games. The lead still 25. In the pocket this time and carries the extra pin. Leaving the seven. Spare in the sixth. A very large spare. Dave gave Gary a break by missing the ten pin, uh, seven pin, but Gary did not return the favor there. He was right on the seven. Dave needs strikes. Or at least marks. Eventually he'll need the double strike. Oh, no. that close. to 10, third in a row in this game for Dave Richards. He just missed the spare. Oof. 
spins that one into the pocket, and he'll shoot at the 4 7. No. Our thanks for the final time this season to Puzzles Bar and Grill, located right inside the Londonderry Bowling Center, helping us out during the taping sessions here. Great place to stop if you're uh, bowling or just in the area here. Right off Route 102 in Londonderry, Puzzles Bar and Grill. On the spare. Big strike. That's about your match, just about. He's going to coast now. He's really taking command here in this final game, as Gary can do. The big strike on spare. Five marks now out of the first seven frames. Coming in 20 pins in front. Now he's pushed the 35 plus this ball, plus these two balls. Oh, look out. Oh, almost. Gary has that ability. So all of a sudden, you'll take control. Spare on strike. And all of a sudden, this thing has been blown wide open. And that will do it. Gary Carrington is the 1996 New Hampshire All-Events State Champion. And he wins them back to back. Great match, both bowlers. Oh, and just <laughs> indicative of the way things have turned here for Dave, just chopping out the three pin. And look at that. Almost converted for the spare. That was a valiant effort by Dave. Kept coming back in the match two or three times last week and again this week. But the final push just wasn't there. Of course, Gary didn't give him much room either. The handshake from Dave Richards to Gary Carrington. And now Gary will establish his final score. He has already won it. Extra pin again on the spare, this time a fill of six. Well, Gary had a 99 in the middle game last week, but in between he had a 142 and a 147. And this week he's going to finish up with either the high 140s or maybe in the 150s. So he had the big games in this match. Each bowler threw a 99, but Gary had the bigger games on the high end than did Dave Richards. And that's the difference. 25 marks for Gary in the match, 20 for Dave Richards. And almost another one. So this will be the best game of the six for Gary Carrington when he needed it. A 148 to win the state championship with a 772 total over seven games, or rather over six games. And we will be back to award the checks and chat with both bowlers here at the Londonderry Bowling Center after this timeout. We're back at the Londonderry Bowling Center, and there are your six game totals in this 1996 New Hampshire Men's All Events Final. 772 for Gary Carrington, 719 for Dave Richards, and uh, perhaps the most amazing number there, da uh, Dan, is that uh, Gary threw a 388 last week and a 384 this week. Uh, very consistent. He had a few big games mixed in there, including the last one when he needed it. Uh, the only time you're safe with Gary is when you're 31 pins ahead with one box to go. <laughs> That's the only time. He just. Uh, you just, you just can't beat him. He's just, he keeps coming at you. Dave kept coming after him, but uh, he opened up big that last game, and that was the difference. Of course, Gary uh, has now won this championship back-to-back -back years, and for Dave Richards, this is his first time reaching the finals, and uh, 
as we said about uh, Debbie Regan a couple of weeks ago, a terrific effort at a first appearance in the finals. That's right. You know they have the talent. I'm surprised it's the only time they've reached the finals, but I'm sure they'll make many more appearances. All right, let's meet both of our bowlers. First of all, a round of applause, if you would, for Dave Richards. <laughs> Dave with the $250 runner-up check. Our congratulations, and uh, boy, you, you battled. Uh, you, you battled all the way in this one. Yeah, I couldn't get it going on lane 30. I couldn't find a head pin there, and uh, with the likes of Gary, you can't, you got to be sharp all the time. We talked about that during the course of the match, especially last week when there was a big difference between one lane and the other. Were you, obviously, you were conscious of it. Were you trying to do anything, make any adjustments? Well, like everybody knows, Doug, this game's a head game, and you know, when you <laughs> step on that lane on lane 30, I'm saying, am I going to hit the head pin in this box? Or... <laughs> And then I was, I was comfortable on 29. I just couldn't get it going on 30. But can't take anything away from Gary. Awesome job. Well, I know you guys have known each other and bowl against and with each other for a long, long time. Uh, the Battle of Plastow is, uh, is settled, at least for now. Yes. We'll, <laughs> we'll see what happens next year on the singles. All right. Thanks very much, Dave. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Our 1996 New Hampshire runner-up, Dave Richards, and now our two-time state champion in the men's division in the all-events championship, Gary Carrington. Gary, come on up. We have a check for $500 here, and uh, congratulations to you. I, I, I'm assuming uh, you must kind of like this event. You've been in it twice, and you've won it twice. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say uh, Exeter Lanes did an excellent job in running the whole tournament. Uh, Rob and Leslie. Absolutely. A round of applause for Exeter Lanes. Very good. Uh, Dave Richards, he, he's a uh, big-time competitor. You know, he's, uh, we've been fighting each other all year long, going back and forth. You know, it's just my turn this time. Uh, he, going, he did a great job. Going back to last week, you uh, opened up uh, after the first box. You had five marks in a row, and it looked like you were going to go on to a blazing victory. But uh, he, he did battle you, and that's kind of Dave's personality. He stuck with you the whole time. Yeah, uh, Dave doesn't give up. He doesn't give up. He's, uh, he's a battler for sure. sure he, he's uh, definitely one of the top bowlers in the game. And I want to ask you about one other thing. It's not often in a, in a long match like this that you could point to one turning point. But I thought if there was one for you, it was toward the end of that fifth game, the second game this week. You rolled that six box. You looked like you were a little frustrated. You rolled a ten box after that, and then the next time you came up, you threw the strike spare nine to take the lead for good. It was it was a game of uh, spurts this time. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd go open for a few, and then I'd, I'd run a mm -hmm. few. Uh, there were two games that I finished well in. Uh, I think it was the third game of the first week there. I, I finished real well, and then in the fifth uh, string also I finished real well. And then I started out good in the last game. I wanted to keep my lead because I know how Dave can. Uh, can bowl, you know, so I just, I just wanted to stay on the lead, but I think it was the two finishes in two games that, uh, that, that, that gave me the victory today. Well, congratulations again, back-to-back -back championships. Uh, congratulations to you and your family, and uh, we'll see you again soon. All right, you know, <laughs> I'll try, I'll try to get back. Huh? All, right. All right, Gary, congratulations. Back-to-back -back championships for Gary Carrington, and uh, it's really kind of amazing. The other amazing stat probably that might have gotten hidden in all that is Gary's only been in this event twice, and he's won it twice uh, both times here on television. Yeah, that's right. Well, when he gets there, he's, he's the champ, and he stays there. That's all, and he's the number one seed both times coming in, so... Can't deny him that. Well, we have a few extra seconds here, and we just want to take a moment to uh, have a blanket thank you to uh, not only all the folks at WNDS-TV, but uh, also all the folks here at Londonderry Bowling Center and at Park Place Lanes who make it all possible, and most especially all of you at home for being uh, faithful viewers of uh, not only this program, but the Sunday program as well. Again, the top-rated programs on the winds of New England. So uh, on behalf of Dan and myself, uh, we'd like to thank you all, and we look forward to the fall. Absolutely. <laughs> With some new changes coming and some new twists, too, that we think you'll like. So be sure to uh, join us in the fall for a brand new season of Candlepin Bowling here on the winds of New England. Until then, have a great summer, everybody. For Dan and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Take care. Thanks for joining us.